Up Paleo, where we talk all things nutrition straight up. I'm one of your hosts, Christina Rice. I'm a holistic health coach, nutritional therapy practitioner in training, and the creator of the Paleo Women Lifestyle Program. You can find me on my website and blog, ChristinaRiceWellness.com, as well as on my other podcast, Wellness Realness. And I'm your other host, Kara Halderman. I'm a nutritional therapy practitioner from Dallas, Texas, NLP master practitioner and mindset coach, and creator of careaboutit.com. In this podcast, we'll be discussing all things paleo, health, and nutrition, along with answering questions straight from you. If you'd like to submit a question for us to answer on the podcast, head to straightuppaleo.com or email us at straightuppaleo at gmail.com. Remember our disclaimer. Materials in this podcast are only to be used as advice and are not to be used in place of general medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you want to support the show, make sure to hit that subscribe button and leave a rating and a review on iTunes. Enjoy the show! Sup, Kara? Hey! Hi! How's Hi. it going? Hi! Guess what? What? When everybody's listening to this, I'm going to be on a plane flying to you. Yay! Yay! I'm so excited! So Wait, excited. you're literally... You're coming Thursday, right? Yeah, but I won't see you Thursday, but I'll see you Friday. Yes, you will. It's my mom's B-Day on Thursday. Pretty yeah. pumped. But I'm excited because you, me, and our intern Kelly who's the bomb. We're all going to spend the weekend together and cook all the food. And I didn't even know it was really Easter, but we're going to have a big Easter thingamajig. <laughs> An Easter Hang. extravaganza. Yes. Is, Easter will, extravaganza. Will this be like your first Easter? I mean, no. Like I just, I haven't celebrated Easter in a really long time. It used to be a huge family thing for me on my mom's side, but it's not really anymore. Wait, are you like, what is your religious affiliation? <laughs> Nothing. I don't even know. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I would, I use, well, I have a, that's for another episode, but I have a long background with religion, really. Like, I guess I kind of grew up Catholic, Methodist ish, and I went to church a lot. We were in and out of church. Um, my dad, is pretty like, I don't know if he'd say anti-religion, but he just likes to be informed. And, um, you know, there was very conflicting sides. Like my Mm -hmm. dad was like anti-ish religion and my mom was like pro Christianity. So I felt super conflicted my whole entire life and I bounced to both sides. And now I would just call myself more spiritual and just you know, believing in energy and higher powers and whatever the heck is up there, but I don't like labeling it. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, you don't need to. Well, when was yeah, the so la- I haven't really. When was the last time Easter? you celebrated it? Do you remember? Probably like three plus years ago or oh. something like that. I thought you were going to say I- like when I was five. <laughs> I was well. That's what I really remember. My mom buys me an Easter basket still, like every single year, Mm -hmm. which is cute. But I forgot that Easter is not just this commercial holiday made up by marketing industries, and it's not just about Easter bunnies and all that stuff. There's (laughs) actually like religion attached to it, so I forget that. And my mom was like, "We're not doing anything for Easter this year." I was like, "What do you mean? Like, what is there to do?" And she was like, "Go to church." I was like. Oh, that. <laughs> yeah. What about you? Do you all celebrate Easter? Yeah. Like as a family? Uh-huh. Usually every year. It's like a big ordeal. We got really? a really, yeah, we always got a really kick-ass Easter egg basket. Usually something electronic is in there. I was going to um, say, what's in it? Do they like hide I, stuff in the eggs? In high, yeah, we would get stuff in the eggs, and there would always be a golden egg that had that would have like fifty bucks in it, and Heck so yeah. everyone wanted that, and it was really competitive. But my parents would spoil us on Easter. I used to, yeah, my mom's ridiculous. You know, oh, you don't know my mom. I forget that you don't know her, but she just—I know of her. She's a legend. She just goes big or goes home, and was just ridiculous. But yeah, always celebrated it. 
And now that we've gotten older, my mom still likes to pretend like we're five and do the same things. But this year I'll be with you. Yay. Yay. Really excited. It'll besides be Besides so doing much fun. Eastery things. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's going to be awesome. But besides doing Eastery things, we wanted to let you guys know we are going to be doing a meetup. And we're pretty pumped about it. Yeah. Cause, It'll be so yeah, much I don't fun. Know. I know. I'm excited. And I don't know how many of y'all are in Dallas or live within the Dallas type area. But if you are available, it's going to be this Saturday. Um, it's going to be at 12 p.m., so, you know, noon, and it's going to be at Brood and Pressed. That's the 31st, if you're not e, listening yes. to this. March 31st, 2018, <laughs> in case yeah, someone March pop, 31st. pops in in a few months <laughs> and they just show up on, on that Saturday. Um, March 31st, 2018. <laughs> How funny would that be? On Saturday, not Good Friday, not Easter Sunday, but Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And we will and be there. And it's a food and press. Yeah, we will be there. We can hang out. We would love to meet you guys. Please come if you're in the area at 12 p.m. It'll be fun. You can get a matcha. You can get a gluten-free brownie. Or not gluten free brownie. <laughs> <laughs> well, the place that we're meeting up at is Brood Impressed, and if you like are familiar with my Instagram, I there's only a solid five places that you can go in Dallas if you're a health person, <laughs> and Brood Impressed is like I'm pretty sure they're 100 percent gluten free, and they're like they call themselves plant based, and they do a bunch of adaptogenic drinks and tonics, and like they do um, they sprout and soak their own nuts and seeds and have granola and raw vegan cheesecakes and all this stuff. Like it's pretty freaking awesome. It's my favorite place ever. I could hang out there forever. So it has, very I know that's nice right up aesthetics. everyone's alley. Very nice. Aesthetics. You it's haven't very... been there. Oh wait, is that not where we went? No, it's a different place. Oh, it's a different, what was the one we went to last time? That one was called Local Press and Brew. Oh, they're all called like all press. Brewed and Press. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm excited yeah. then to see this new one. It'll be a lot of fun. So we would love to see you there. I hope you guys come. I also hope the Real Housewives of Dallas come. <laughs> I have been searching for them. Like, I feel I'm like determined. forever now. I'm determined. I went to uh, White Rock Lake this past weekend, which I took you to last time. Mm-hmm. And it's super busy on the weekends. And Corey and I were riding bikes. And I, like, read in some article that the Real Housewives of Dallas sometimes – walk around that lake so the whole time I was oh I bet. staring down everyone oh my gosh trying to find them. we gotta go around that lake and I'm gonna be on the hunt I'm gonna be on the hunt it's gonna be a lot of fun I'm super excited because you and Kelly are gonna cook for me <laughs> basically that's gonna be your birthday present to me thank you and it's gonna be a lot of fun and I so Kelly and I are staying in an Airbnb and I have been making my packing list, and do you know what my number one thing is? Number one, Somnifix. It is Somnifix. I (laughs) just stocked up. I just got my new um, order in, and I just got five boxes because I realized I don't know why I was just getting one at at a time. So I I just stocked up on five, so now I'm set for the next half a year. (laughs) Um, Yeah, I cannot wait. So if you guys aren't familiar with Somnifix... It's mouth tape, specially designed, so it's hypoallergenic. It has a breathable vent in the front. And it makes it really, really easy to get the best sleep of your life because mouth taping helps you breathe through your nose rather than your mouth, which has a lot of benefits. For me personally, this has helped me stop waking up a million times in the middle of the night because if you're unaware of this, it is not normal to wake up in the middle of the night while you're asleep. You're not supposed to be doing that. So if you're waking up in the middle of the night when you're sleeping, that means something is off. For me, it was a cortisol spike, clearly. And having the Somnifix over my mouth allowed me to breathe through my nose. And the thing is, when you're breathing through your mouth, that can put your body back into a sympathetic state and then spike your cortisol and then you can wake up. So that's one thing. But it also helps if you snore or if you drool. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah jewelers in the house yep and also like there's like so many interesting studies about the effects of nose breathing versus mouth breathing and you know it affects your immunity athletic performance I had somebody send me this um like a screenshot out of a book they're reading 
and I think it was a new mom, and it was about like tips for raising your children. And it was about teaching your children to breathe through their noses because of all of these like the no immu- way. the immune functions associated with it. Yeah, she screenshot it and she was like, "Look at what I read," and all I could think of was you insomnia fix. And it was well, like you've this- got all those little you know hairs yeah. in your nose that act as filters, so it's mm-hmm. like your it's like the gut lining of your nose. Yeah, you know? exactly. And like I was reading about how you know people who. Um, you know, if you, um, like, think about it. If you're sleeping and your mouth is just o- hanging open, a lot of stuff can just get in there. Oh, my God. I'm terrified. Yeah. And just, terrified. like, get straight into your, which is, this is unrelated, but, you know, like, the average person eats eight spiders a year. That's exactly what I think of when I think of sleeping with my mouth open yeah. because I'm terrified of eating spiders That's not even what I was think- talking about, though. Like, I'm talking about – I mean, that's one thing. But, like, just, like, bacteria in the air, you know, just, like, things can get in there. <laughs> just and bacteria. Affect your- and then you have morning breath and it's disgusting. Yeah. So you just – you got to get the Somnifix. So if you want to try it out, you should go to either Amazon or Somnifix.com. It will link you to Amazon. You can order some and use the code SUP Sleep S U P S L E E P for ten percent off, and I promise you will not regret it. It is a game changer, Woo-hoo. game yep. changer. So that's the Changing one. Game. That was my number one thing that I need to make sure I bring. And I oh, here, I have my thing right in front of me. So many fix, um, pills, HDMI cord, <laughs> tea, <Pills. laughs> headphones. Chargers. <laughs> Those are my top, my top most important things. <laughs> All the electronics. Am I forgetting there's, anything? What? Sorry, there's a gnat that was just flying in front of my face. That oh was the god. scariest thing that's ever happened. Oh god, I hope not. Well, no, you. I don't think you're forgetting anything. Just bring yourself and your electronics. Oh my oil. Somni fix. My central oils. Oh, yeah. For you, that's a big deal. I literally can't be without them, so there's that. And I also have to remember this time to take my pepper spray off of my keychain. TSA never takes away my pepper spray. I always forget to take it off my keychain. Like, I just throw my keys in my purse, and then I go through security, and they've never caught it. And I'm like, wow, you test my food for, like, bomb agents, like, or they'll go through my books, and I'm like, you don't get my pepper spray. I'm sorry. I, just I don't understand TSA. I, it's just a. It's a. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even. We're not even gonna get into it. But uh, yeah. So that's that. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and you guys should. You guys should definitely follow along on social media if you're not because. Speaking it'll be a of lot social of fun. media, <laughs> I'm gonna have that. to reactivate my social media. <laughs> not like I deleted it or anything, but. So I was at brunch the other day with Corey, and first of all, if, I haven't really, like, shared a whole lot of this, but for the past, like, month or so, I've been going through some shit, basically, and I didn't really, like, tell anyone, and it was affecting my life, and I was just in, like, this huge rut, and then basically one day Christina called me out, and it, like, pulled me out of all of that stuff. If you don't have a person in your life that, like, calls you out on your crap, you kind of need it. So <laughs> if you don't you. have a person in your life who calls you out on your crap, call me. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Or, or don't, I don't know if she'll want you to do that, but if you, you need someone in your life to call you on your crap. Like I know we all go through stuff and it gets really hard, but there seems to be a certain point. You can only suffer for so long to the point where you're just like being a Debbie Downer and like letting other people down. So you have to have somebody in your life that notices that and is able to help facilitate you feeling better and pulling yourself out of that state. So I was very thankful that Christina called me on my crap because I literally feel like a new person. But speaking of social media, um, part of what is helping me feel so freaking great is I've taken just, I've gone social media, hey, like what's that word? hiatus. Yeah. Hiatus. Got it. Hiatus. hiatus. I was at brunch brunch the other day with Corey and no lie, we had a kombucha and vodka and we were like one drink deep and I don't really drink. So I get 
I get intoxicated quickly. And we are just talking about life and like how social media takes up our time. And we are just checking Instagram the whole time. And all of a sudden we looked at each other and like, let's delete Instagram off of our phones. And so we did it. And then I deleted Twitter and then I deleted Facebook and then I deleted Snapchat and I deleted literally every social media off of my phone. And it's been... It's been like three solid days so far without checking anything. I have not even checked, like not even gone on my computer to look. And I can't even explain like the actual feeling that I I have. Like, I feel like I actually know who I am. It sounds really weird and cheesy, but when we're looking at social media just all day long, even just browsing and scrolling we're not leaving any room to discover who we are because it's just continuous programming that's being bombarded into our brains. And especially with, you know, social media being more of a a marketing type platform now, it really is marketing and it's directed to, it's directly designed to impact you. And I felt super lost. Like I didn't really even know who I was and I didn't understand my passions and like who I was as a person. And ever since I just kind of turned that influence off, I've been really able to use that time that I would have spent scrolling, which I realized is hours. I didn't think I was actually scrolling for that long, but it was hours, like Mm -hmm. hours of my day. That's crazy. It was taking up so much time. Mm -hmm. And I thought that I thought that I just didn't have time in my day, but I was actually just scrolling. I'm so mad at myself for doing this for so long, you know, it sucks, but now I feel way more connected to myself and I've used that time to do a lot of journaling, meditation, honestly, sleeping more, um, and just coming back to me. And it's really helped me realign and be a little bit more clear, like on my purpose. I'm definitely going to have to come back on to social media and I'm going to have to figure out some boundaries, but if you're in a place where you can delete your apps off of your phone, and just go rogue for a couple days, do it. It is beyond worth it. I have a few things to say. Um, So one of the women in my program, my Paleo Women Lifestyle program, um, told me about this app called Moment. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called Moment. I should probably double check that, but pretty sure it is. And it basically, it, it shows you exactly how long you spend on each app a day um, and just really gives you perspective. Scary. It really gives you perspective. And I've, like, a lot of people are like, you know, I thought I spent maybe an hour and I'm spending three to four hours. Um, and this is something that, you know, I actually took a class in college all about the impacts of social media um, on specifically middle schoolers, which is really fascinating. But, you know, if you talk, if, if you like read interviews with people who are the CEOs of these companies that create these apps um, or these technologies um, or just the inventors, the founders, they all have something in common. If they have children or themselves, they put strict limits on the usage of of these items. Like, like, iPad, no iPads, they can't use that app. Like, they do not use the, the app they created because they created it to be addictive and to sort of take away that willpower, and it sucks you in, and they know that. And so, I mean, I was – I forget what company it was or what app it was, but the guy was saying, like, I don't let my daughter use it because I know as soon as she opens it, she's going to become addicted and spend all her time on it, you know? Like, they don't even – they don't use mm-hmm. the technologies they create for this reason. So it's really – really important to pay attention to, like, and I know people think that this is stupid, that people just say, just stop using your phone, get over it, I'm like, no, you don't understand, I think that for a lot of people listening to this, this is very relevant to your life, and we just gotta be realistic about it, and we gotta take a step back, and I'm actually so happy, because actually, my, one of my clients today was, like, she texted me, she goes, She goes, I feel the urge to delete social media apps today and get rid of them for a week. And I'm going to, I'm texting you so you hold me accountable to this. I think I'm going to be so much more productive. Um, And then she goes, I just deleted Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram, and it feels so good. And then she's like, been giving me updates. And she's like, I feel so free and so much more present. Hell yeah. That's how I feel. I didn't realize how much I would, how much time I would spend just roaming around on social media, especially while eating. And I have so much more time to do other things. And I realized that I was just missing out on life because I was busy on my phone. 
And she goes, I love the social media free life. I'm like, yes. 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 I love I it. I love that. Mm-hmm. I want to meet her because we have something in common now. Literally, yeah. that is exactly how it feels. Like once you hit delete, I don't know what it is, but you feel like you've been released. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen the matrix, but it was literally like I was unplugged, like (laughs) from the matrix. That is how I felt. And I felt like I could go out there and just kind of be me. I felt like I always had to act like something else Mm -hmm. and like be what people want me to be for social media. And I wasn't ever giving myself the opportunity to explore what does Kara want, Mm -hmm. not what does social media want. And it's so hard because like our brands, you know, they're tied to who we are. Mm -hmm. So we have to be open, we have to share, and we kind of have to change ourselves in a way, not change ourselves, but modify social media to appeal to people. You know, we can't just be ourselves 100% of the time or we can't show absolutely 100% everything or it would be a turnoff. To mm-hmm. some people. So it's very difficult when you have a brand that you're literally the face and your life is the face of your brand. And I know for some people, it's basically impossible at this point to completely just delete your app. But even, I don't even know, finding ways to just completely disconnect from Instagram and figure out who you are in that moment is so useful. <clears throat> and I thought I was just going to be able though to you know, be like, okay, these are my dedicated Instagram hours, but still keep it on my phone. Mm -hmm. And I tried that and that didn't even work because it's there. Like it's there right on your phone and you're bored and you're sitting there and you're just like, whatever, I'll just click. It'll just be five seconds. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it ends up being an hour. I'm actually working. I'm going to post a blog post because people ask me to about like, I've been drawing a lot of boundaries because I mean, for like, this is my job, so I can't just get rid of stuff, but drawing a lot of the boundaries I have been drawing has been helping a ton, like turning off my DMs and like, you don't realize it's a time suck. No matter, you know, for me, it's like, I can't spend hours responding to everything and liking all these pictures. You know what I mean? Like when I need to be spending hours responding to my clients and working with the girls in my program and like making, you know, actual content, you know, like there's only so much time in a day and it's, it really is just a, a silly time suck when I have to, you know, we should be doing things that are actually, moving us forward in life, whether that be work or personal development. Um, So I think that is really, like, key to remember. Um, Like, we all need to draw boundaries. I think for me, turning off my DMs and, like, I only – I've, like, made a new rule where I only check email once or twice a day Um, and just, like, being okay with that and taking texts off my phone – off my computer was huge – so and t- turning off all notifications from email and Instagram from my phone, like turning off the notifications helps so much. So all of that ties in. But I do want to, before I forget, I want to mention that my program, I'm opening up signups again because I'm going to do another round in April. So if you're interested in joining my Paleo Women Lifestyle Program, I'm going to open up signups again on April 9th. So get ready for that. Um, I'm not sure how many days they will be open for. Um, I'm gonna plan on it being until that Friday the 13th and then we'll start the program on the 16th. And just so you understand the way it's laid out. So it's basically five weeks worth of content and I pace you out week by week, but you can also totally go at your own pace. So you don't have to go at that pace. You will always have access to it and it's a ton of video and audio lectures for me, PDFs, and then access to the private Facebook group and live video coaching calls with me and the rest of the women in the program. And you get so much information about, this is about just the whole lifestyle. So we're going to go into nutrition and eating and what to eat and when to eat and all of those things. We're also going to talk about exercise and we're going to talk about balancing our hormones. And this is a big thing we talk about is also social media and boundaries with that and all of these life stressors and getting sunlight and sleep hacks. Sleep is something we talk about a lot. So all of these different things that go into just a healthier lifestyle, we cover. And I just think it's such an incredible program because it's like a smaller group of women and I get to know everybody very well and you'll get to know me and the live coaching calls are so much fun because everybody gets to know each other and you can ask me anything you want. We can all bounce ideas off of each other. The Facebook group is like our little secret club, so much fun. And 
I'm just really excited for this next round. So if you want to sign up for that, the signups will be or they're on my website um, and they will open on the 9th. So get ready and don't miss don't miss it. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Don't I just, miss it. Don't miss it. I Remember. I need to alert people so they don't miss it because I always get emails from people. They say, I missed your signups. I didn't see. And I was like, they were open. The for, they were open. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta be ready. So this is my first warning. So there's that. Second thing that has been exciting is I made a bomb barbecue sauce recipe, and it is low fodmap, and it Ooh. is completely, Ugh, so good. completely sweetener free. So like no sweeteners, because my thing with barbecue sauce is it always has honey or maple syrup or dates or something like the paleo ones and there's nothing wrong with those in small amounts but if you're on like a candida diet like me um or if you're keto or if you're watching it for any reason you know uh, like it's nice to have an option without it so this one is like me approved so there's no sweeteners and no fodmaps so no garlic and no onions and it tastes so Ooh, good and you know it'll be good what if you made, like, a barbecue chicken pizza with the cauliflower foods crust. That's exactly what I want to do. Wait, really? Yeah. Oh, my God. Read your mind. Yeah. I, that's the first thing I thought of when you said yeah. that. Yeah. I'm, like, plotting so it. so good. It's so – I'm, like, slathering on everything. And I made it on ribs, and then I made shredded chicken. I'm, like, I want to make a pizza with this. Because Heck that pizza yeah. crust is the bomb. I have one cauliflower foods crust left in my freezer and I might save it for when you guys come so we can all just have a little have a pizza party. piece of pizza have a I only have one left it's so depressing but we can make something else to go along with it but I just want a little taste I know it's of funny because we all pizza. we all are like well we I, we're all like we eat the whole thing at like <laughs> I, whole use, thing. I use one crust for me for dinner <laughs> yeah they're so good though and so easy you literally just take it out of the freezer put it in the oven for like what is it 10 minutes yeah 10 15 minutes and then put your toppings on put it back in for a few minutes and it's done and it's so good it stays it's like a real pizza crust it mm-hmm. stays firm you can pick it up and it just tastes so good I can't get over it it's so good and it actually I keep mentioning this every time but it's my favorite because it actually has flavor and it doesn't taste just like bland bread and yeah, that's because it's super, the ca- it's super yeah it's super good and the cauliflower foods crust is different because it doesn't have any like weird fillers the ingredients list is super simple I think I was watching mind pumps um youtube channel and they did a youtube like yeah they made make pizzas. pizza yeah and I heard them say there's a whole head of cauliflower in each crust really? I don't know if that's true or not but that's a lot of vegetables y'all if <laughs> If not that's true, <laughs> no, just kidding. Not well, for you. Not really. Hey, that's but great. That's how you get your veggies in. Exactly. Last week, so somebody asked us how to get all. veggies in. <laughs> that's how you get them in. It's so. I bet. Also, that's a good way to trick your boyfriend into becoming healthier. Be like, let's have a pizza night, and then you make him a pizza with that crust. Exactly. And he'll be like, and honestly, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, Corey loved it. I honestly like to overcook mine because I'm kind of weird and I like things extra crispy and I don't mind if it's a little bit burnt. So if you like burnt vegetables, you'd kind of <laughs> like this. But I overcook mine a little bit to where it's almost burnt and then it's super crispy and tastes like really salty and good. Like, I love it. Oh my it's God. so delicious. No, it so I just good. put a bunch of leftovers on it. It didn't even make sense what I made. But once I put it on the cauliflower foods crust, it made sense. It was random. It was like defrosted artichoke hearts, leftover ground beef, nutritional yeast, and pizza sauce and spinach. It didn't even make sense. It doesn't it have so to make good. sense. You can put anything on that crust and it'll taste good. So if you guys haven't tried it yet, you should definitely try it. You can use the code... Straight up paleo for ten percent off an order of fifty dollars or more. So I would just get a few pizza crusts, keep them in your freezer, and then you always are ready to have a pizza for a party, pizza party, a paleo pizza party. So just go to their website, cauliflowerfoods.com, and use the code straight up paleo. Yep, and all of our sponsor discounts and codes and stuff will now be in the show notes. So if you spaced out and you want our discount and the links just go to our show notes straight up paleo.com you can get Yay. that okay should we um hop into the 
the, the Q's? questions? The Q's? Yeah. And the A's? Let's go for it. All right. <laughs> I'll read this. Hi, ladies. Love your show. Thanks. I do have a question about metabolism for you. I'm 28 year, I'm a 28-year-old female and have lost about 80 pounds over the last few years. This last year has been a bit different because I discovered the paleo diet and started diving deep into the health world. I was definitely your typical dieter and tried to hit 1,200 calories a day and often turned to protein bars to something as, a, as something as a real meal replacement. Since about June, as I heard more and more about eating enough food, I started not thinking about calories and purposefully started eating more, mainly in the form of having three full meals a day and amping up the fat. I know that it probably downregulated my metabolism by eating so little calories for a number of years. And I would like to fix that, but I have gained about 16 pounds since starting to eat more. And while I know that's not necessarily a bad thing, it's hard to not let it discourage me a bit. I'm still working on fixing my relationship with food, and I don't want to start cutting calories again just to stay leaner. But I don't feel comfortable in my body as it is now. Maybe that just comes with time. Just wondering if you could speak to how long it can take for one's metabolism to shift to being able to handle a higher amount of calories without gaining weight. I've heard resistance training helps, but do you have any other suggestions? I eat paleo, lots of non-starchy veggies, usually just a couple pieces of fruit a day as opposed to paleo treats. I eat out usually once or twice a week, at which I'm a bit looser and don't trip out if there is sugar in a marinade or if my fish comes with a lentil salad. Maybe some vegan ice cream or something. You get what I mean. I mean, I mainly go on long walks for my exercise, but I'm trying to implement a resistance training routine twice a week. I get seven to eight hours of sleep every night and work at keeping my stress low. Also, I thought I would note that I went off birth control back in April of last year after being on it for years. Still haven't gotten my period back, but that is also something I'm working on. Any help you can give would be greatly appreciated. I want to heal my body, but I also want to feel confident in it. Thanks again, Sharon. Sharon, I truly think that she's on the right path. She like when I read is. this, yeah, I think you are being way too hard on yourself mm-hmm. or you may be like your own worst critic right now because I think you're on a freaking amazing path. Like this sounds bad, but most of the questions that we read, not to be offensive to you guys, but a lot of the questions that I read when I get, I really sense energy a lot. Like I feel like just by reading your questions, I can tell a lot about you guys. Um, and a lot of the energy I get from a lot of the questions is really kind of frantic and like people they, they have some sort of, um, like beliefs about their body and about food and they're really stressed out about it. And that's okay. We're all at different points and our journey is in our life. But when I read this question, my first impression was that really you're on the right path and you are really like, you're in the correct mindset. You're just kind of second guessing yourself and being your own worst critic. And you're wanting to kind of slip back into that diet mentality Um, back to restricting all of that. And you think that you need to look a certain way and that you need to lose that weight that you gained. But really, I think you need to appreciate how far you've come right now. Um, You've stepped away from 1200 calories a day from dieting all the time. um, And you now have this more healthy mindset about food. You're not fretting about, like you said, like vegan ice cream here and there, lentils at your salad, like your relationship with food has probably come a very long way. And I think your first step in this process is to really acknowledge how far you've come. So that's really just my first piece of advice. And you've probably changed a lot. So just acknowledge that, journal about it, whatever you need to do to be grateful for where you are right now. It's my first piece of advice. Yeah, I think that... You should give yourself some major props for, I mean, not many people can even realize, oh, I'm eating too little. I need to start eating more and like doing, like not many people can pull themselves out of that hole. So the fact that you realized that you were dieting, eating too little, and that you started having three full meals, amping up the fat, all of that is just huge. So give yourself some props. With that, the other thing, so you've lost about 80 pounds over the last few years, and I want to use this as sort of a wider example to people as to why it's really important if you are looking for weight loss to do so in a healthy way because if you do it in a way that's just a quick fix, that is not long lasting always. So, and it's not always good for you, yeah, yeah. So, a lot of times it can it can rebound 
you know, rebound back. And especially, that's why when people buy into a lot of these, like, marketing schemes, like, they depend on repeat customers, okay? So they're going to give you something that maybe you will lose weight pretty quickly, but then in a few months, you're going to gain it back because of the way it happened. So then they think, so then, like, the point of that is so that you will think, oh, this helped me lose weight before, so then you go back to it and you pay for it again, you know? Um, not saying that this, that's necessarily what happened here, but just... Just a point. But with her, this is what happened. Like, she realized that she was eating 1,200 calories a day, and now she had downregulated her metabolism so, so far. And this is what you don't want to do. So if you are just starting on a weight loss journey, don't lose weight via cutting your calories to 1,200 a day, okay? Because it's not going to do any favors in the long run. So I just want to kind of use that as a general example. The other thing, so you lost over 80 pounds. That's a pretty substantial amount of weight. And, and then you said since eating more, you've gained about 16 pounds. So there are a few different scenarios that could be going on here, and I'm not sure because I don't know you. Like, I don't know what your weight is at right now or where it started at because it could be that you lost too much weight for your body, and now your body is trying to get back to the normal weight. This happens sometimes because a lot of times when it, when it comes to weight, especially as women, we have really inaccurate perceptions of the weight our bodies should be at. And this is just a function of society and like these pressures and ideals we have impressed upon our brains that aren't true. And also when you are going through a weight loss period of time, this also results in some form of like body dysmorphia for many of us. Like we don't really realize how much weight we have lost or like we think we look bigger than we do or we think we look skinnier than like, you know, it's kind of like an off perception because it's you and your body. So... One scenario could be that your body wants that, like that, maybe that extra 16 pounds you've gained back, your body should be at that weight. The other scenario is, okay, maybe maybe that is over your ideal weight, but this, again, is a consequence of like down-regulating your metabolism and then trying to speed it back up. This is what happens. So when our bodies are healing, we've talked about this before, you, okay, you need to focus on the healing and deal with the weight later. Your weight is trying to even out. And if you focus on the health, eventually long term, like get, being at a healthy weight, a healthy eating healthy, like continuing with healthy lifestyle habits, eventually your weight is going to even out. So there's a chance that if that extra 16 pounds was too much for your body, if you continue to chase the health, to chase your health, go after that, it will eventually go back down to what your body should be at. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. And when I was reading this story, it actually reminded me a lot of what I'm personally going through. And I just kind of want to be an antidote like for you. I've never been overweight though. I've never had more than like 10 pounds that I ever really, I've honestly never really had to be able to lose weight, but my weight has always fluctuated, but I lost way too much weight for my body when I was doing a ketogenic diet. And I also was on about a 1200 to 1400 calorie ketogenic diet because that's what, when I researched and all of that, that's what they said to do for weight loss. Because for some reason I thought I had to lose weight, but I didn't, but I lost way too much weight for my body. And then I started eating normal again and actually eating a more substantial amount of calories and my body drastically rebounded and I gained 20 pounds. I've actually never been heavier than I have been today, but I feel a lot better, but I know you, I know you mentioned here, um, in the, in your description, you said like, I feel uncomfortable in my body. Um, I know what that feels like because when I first gained that weight, when I gained 20 pounds of basically body fat, maybe a little bit of it was muscle. I was uncomfortable in my body physically. The, like the amount of weight that was on my body was a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and not, not in like a way that I had body fat, it was inflammation. So there's also a, there's a difference there. I think you should be able to decipher is this like body fat that I've gained or has part of this been inflammation as well. You can usually tell you feel it when it's inflammation, but I felt uncomfortable physically. And I also just felt uncomfortable mentally with how I looked because I'd never looked like this before and it was uncomfortable. And I think that's where you are right now. And I would encourage you to kind of explore what you're not comfortable with. 
So are you not comfortable physically or are you not comfortable mentally with looking like that? And kind of dig a little bit deeper, like, why are you not comfortable looking like that? Like, why is that 16 pounds such making such a huge deal for you, making you feel so uncomfortable? And I don't know what you'll find, but there's usually something there. And I went through that same process and <clears throat> I'm kind of over it now. <laughs> like, I don't really care about that weight anymore. But the funny thing is, once I let go of being uncomfortable with my body weight, I actually lost body fat and I put on, and I lost inflammation in my body. What was a lot of inflammation and a lot of body fat calmed down and it's now muscle because I actually had the confidence to go to the gym and like work out and treat my body correctly. So the inflammation has gone down and I lost body fat and really it was all by shifting my mindset from, oh man, I'm uncomfortable in the skin I'm in to, okay, this is my situation. I've gained weight and it's not going to change overnight. So I can either, like Christina said, just really focus on me and better my health and hopefully things will turn around for me. And they did. Like they completely did 100%. So if you focus on the health, the physical health, that's huge. So, you know, eating the foods that are working right for your body. And if you have weight that is caused by inflammation, kind of working on that. And then working on mentally your health there as well. And being okay with where you're at right now doesn't mean that you should give up on trying to lose weight. If you have extra weight to actually lose, doesn't mean that. It just means accepting where you are right now and being okay with that. Because mm -hmm. remember, it's just one body. Like you have one, one body. That's it. And really just treat it sacredly because it's, it's your home. And I don't want to, it's not comfortable. No, it's not okay to be uncomfortable in your house, in your own home. And I mean, we all know what it's like to feel uncomfortable in our house. <laughs> <laughs> and that's essentially what it's like in, in our earth suit when we're not comfortable with our bodies. So that's, that's kind of it. That's my spiel. Okay. So this is something that I really, I, everybody if you have a scale, what I want to encourage you to do is throw it away. Okay. Bye. Like you don't need the scale. And like to me, the so we have to understand a scale is a stressor to so many people. It is a stressor. And the fact that you said you've gained about 16 pounds. That is like a specific number, which to me is indicating. <laughs> you're you, weighing yourself. You're weighing yourself. And you are looking at. And the fact that you even, you know, emailed us about this. Like it's like this is stressing you out that you can't, like, you know, something's going on with your weight is stressing you out. And so that is a stressor and that is not going to help your efforts either. So I really would encourage you to stop weighing yourself and we need to judge how we feel based on how we feel, not what a number says, okay? That's a huge one. Um, the numbers can play games with your mind and the numbers don't mean anything. They really don't mean anything. If you get more muscular, you're going to weigh more and you'll probably look leaner, you know? And so you really can't tell. Um, and also, it's like if you eat more food, the number's going to go up. You know, it, your, our weights fluctuate all the time. So I just really would encourage you to throw away that scale. It is freeing. And I, any person who's ever come to me with weight loss, we always get rid of the scale. And they come back and it, they literally lose weight because they don't have that stressor anymore of, of yeah. weighing themselves. So that's one thing. The other thing was like, Again, this is really hard because I wish I knew what your weight was at and what your height was and, like, what you're eating. I wish I knew more information because I do not want to gloss over the fact that you haven't gotten your period back. So those oh, of yeah. us... yeah. How could we glance over that? Those <laughs> of us with amenorrhea, this is something, like, that is huge in my practice. Um, this is a really common pattern. We tend to need... Our bodies need more weight to feel safe. Because when our bodies feel safe, that tells our bodies it's okay to have a period. Our bodies are not going to have a period um, if they feel stressed out and scared that we won't be able to prov provide for a potential child. Um, so oftentimes we need to put on more weight. Not everybody needs to put on more weight, but oftentimes we do need to put on more weight. And with a history of dieting, you usually have to put on 
more weight than you're comfortable with, more weight than your body's set point. You kind of have to overcompensate so your body knows for sure it's safe. Um, And this can be something people are really uncomfortable with. Another thing, though, is I see this a lot, and I want to come back to, like, you need to take a a deep step back and, and think, okay, do I really have an accurate perception of myself? Because I see girls coming, talking to me, and I'm looking at them, and they are thin and beautiful and vibrant, and they're telling me I've gained 15 pounds while I'm trying to get my period back, and I'm so fat. They say this to me, and it makes me want to cry because I know that what they see in the mirror is not what I see. They t- I've gained yep. so much weight, and I'm, like, thinking in my head, you are still so thin, you know? And it's it's really hard, but I understand. I under I totally understand. Like, I mean, trust me. When I was – I was at 70 pounds, and I gained 50 pounds, okay, from there. And during that process, I thought I was getting so fat. I thought that, but I, then I thought, I, I told myself, I said, I have no, I don't have an accurate perception of how I look, like, because I'm just comparing myself to what I looked like last week, you know, and I look at pictures now, at times when I thought, I remember seeing these pictures at the time and thought, oh my god, I look so chubby, and I look at them now, and I think, oh my god, I was underweight, okay? Yeah. So you do really, you really need to kind of, Sometimes you kind of just have to surrender and realize, okay, maybe I don't really know what I look like. And that's why it's better just focus on, okay, I need to get my stress in check. I need to focus on how I feel as a person. I need to get my period back because it is the ultimate sign of health as a woman, okay? So that is something that I really think you should you should focus on because the amenorrhea um, – is a a very important piece to this. It is. And she also just got off birth control like six months ago, something like that. So remember, I don't, we did that whole episode with like Courtney Swan a while back ago about birth control. And she did a good explanation on that, but birth control, I don't remember how long you've been on it or anything, but it actually masks hormonal imbalances that are going on. Mm -hmm. So You may have started out with a hormonal imbalance already happening, and then you're on birth control, you're on birth control, you thought everything was good and fine, and then you get off birth control, and nothing really changed from when you went on it. So it was probably masking a hormonal symptom, and your body probably more than ever needs that extra weight, that extra security, the extra food, like Christina said, because it it needs it. It needs it in order to bear children. It needs the micronutrients, all of that. So I really do think that you are on the right track. I think you are just psyching yourself out because you have a past of poor body image and Mm -hmm. you're just, like you said, you're not comfortable Mm -hmm. with the way that you look. So focus on health and focus on being okay with who you are. And I know that's a really difficult process. Um, I actually do have a cool exercise that I actually did today. Um, what that kind of relates to like who you are. I know we all say like, who am I, who am I? And if you cannot get the association of like who you are, um, without food, like without food and without weight, you just kind of want to brain dump who you might be aside from that. I think this is a good exercise. So just on a blank piece of paper, instead of um, asking who am I? I actually like to ask what am I? For some reason, that actually opens up the mind to more possibility and you get more answer. So I literally took a blank piece of paper and then in the center, in a marker, I wrote, What am I? And I just closed my eyes, I did some breathing, and I just did a word dump. Literally, like anything that came to my mind. And none of those words had to do with food. None of those words said skinny, fat overweight, chubby, like healthy, or like, or I did write down healthy, but that's a different word. But none of my words had to do with food and body image. And that just proves that we are, we are not our bodies. Our bodies are a part of us, but we are not our bodies. So that can be a good exercise for you to kind of dissociate from that a little bit. And remember that you also have a soul, you have a mind, you have a personality. You're not just a body. So try it out. See how it goes. 
No, I love that. I think that would be a great exercise for every single person listening to this to do. Um, I, I mean, her question is how long is it going to take? Oh, yeah. Basically, <laughs> I can't tell you. No one can tell yeah. you an exact amount of time. I mean, this is going to depend on how long you were eating 1,200 calories for. Is it going to depend on any other hormonal or metabolic damage that's been done and also – you know, for some people, they can fix their metabolisms in a month. Some people, it takes years. But mm-hmm. no matter what, um, the sooner you focus on this, the better. These would be yeah. my, my action steps for you. It's hard because, I, like I said, I don't know what your weight is. Um, so my action steps for you would be to focus on your relationship with your body because this seems to be the biggest stressor in your life. Um, because you say you're focusing on other things. It seems like your sleep is in check. Um, I would focus on getting, making sure you're eating enough food. So enough food. Um, you need all of your macronutrients. You need protein, fat, and carbs. You need all of them. Um, and focus on getting your period back. Once your period is back, if you are still at a weight that you're uncomfortable with and it's not something that's if you are actually at a weight that is not good for your body, okay? Um, and we need to be objective about this because a lot of people think that they have an extra 10 pounds to lose and they, they don't. Um, these, these women we see on Instagram and in magazines are usually underweight, okay? This, this idolized image we have of what a female body should look like is an underweight woman and not a healthy woman, okay? Okay. Um, that's just something we need to swallow. So, if, But if you actually are still at a weight that isn't healthy for your body, my recommendation would be never to lose weight by dropping calories. Um, I would eat at the, like eat the amount of food, the calories that you want to be eating at long term. I would reduce the fruit and keep it to a serving a day. I wouldn't have multiple pieces of fruit. Um... And so I would replace that with either more protein. I would say that if you have to lose weight, if the first thing you should focus on is protein. And then fat, make sure your blood sugar is regulated and your starchy carbohydrates over the fruit is what I would suggest. Um, I think that strength training is the most important thing to be doing. I would definitely focus on that. And that will definitely help speed up your metabolism. Um, so, I, and I would... R- r- not do any car like any cardio besides long oh, no. leisure walks like stay away from the cardio that will just mess up your metabolism more so focus on the strength training I would do full body I would do you know three times a week um work up to using weights and low stress don't turn your workouts and in- don't turn your weight training workouts into cardio <laughs> um and those would sort of be my actionable steps at that point but your first thing that you need to do is focus on your relationship with yourself because it's going to help with your stress your relationship with your body detach recognize that our bodies are just a vessel it is not who you are figure out what defines you as a person it's not your weight it's not the way you look on the outside um focus on that work on the stress get the period back and then then go from there see where where you're at once you've once you've done all that work and Beautiful. that's my that's my response. <clears throat> cool. I think we really got that one. So mm-hmm. thanks for sending in that question. I'm sure a lot of people have the same yeah, one. Yeah, it's a really common one. So definitely thank yeah. you for. And again, I think we both like. I just want to say, you need to give yourself some major props because you pulled yourself out of the hole. Most people come to us and they're like, "I'm eating 1,200 calories. What do I do?" Like. You, yeah, they are in the hole. <laughs> yeah, you you did that, and then you saw you then you said, okay, I need to upregulate my metabolism again, and you're literally doing all the right things. So, add a girl, right? Like, yep. So, give yourself some major props there. Yeah, that's awesome. So, I do want to do one more question. It's a really short one. I just have a little blurb to say about it, basically, and I'll go ahead and read it. It's from Kristen. She said, "Not sure if you guys have addressed this question before." Uh, 
Oh, oh, so feel free to direct me to this specific podcast. I just started listening to your podcast a few weeks ago and I'm hooked. Thank you. My question is, what are both of your thoughts on adding fat to your coffee or matcha lattes? Bulletproof coffee seems to be a huge trend, but is there merit to the idea of adding a tablespoon of grass-fed butter or a tablespoon of coconut oil, butter, or MCT oil to your latte? Is it better to add these things occasionally or is it okay to have this daily I get a lot of questions. Like, I don't know why, but I get a lot of questions about this because a long time ago on my social media, I posted that I was going to stop drinking bulletproof coffee. Mm-hmm. And for me, this is totally like an individual question. Like this, so- this is something that you're just gonna have to figure out on your own because some people do freaking awesome with fat in their coffee. Um, And those are usually the people that are able to utilize fat quickly for fuel and energy and have really good, strong working livers, gallbladders. They can digest fat well. Um, For me personally, I mean, I think that I can digest fat pretty well. But for me, I actually noticed that drinking my fat made me bloated um, and it made me feel sluggish when I drank it. But when I ate it with a balanced meal – then I actually felt a lot better. So I stopped doing the bulletproof coffee and adding a bunch of fat and like butter ghee, all of that to my drinks. And now I just use like a homemade almond milk or something like that that has way less fat and it feels a lot better for me personally. I don't feel as bloated and slow and weighed down. Also, I felt like it was throwing off my hunger signals When I was drinking the fatty coffee, I would often not be hungry for breakfast just because the fat is so satiating. And I would wait hours and hours. Like I would basically eat, drink the fatty coffee and I'd put like collagen, all that stuff in it. And then I would like essentially skip breakfast and then eat lunch. And that's not enough calories. Like for a woman, I'm just saying that's like probably not a good idea. If you have any sort of hormone imbalance going on, not a good idea. Um, I pretty much hit a wall after a long time of doing that and my energy plummeted and I was just not feeling good. So I, I would recommend if you're going to do that, drink it and then eat something. You don't have to add like a, a crap ton of fat to your meal because you probably just ate like two tablespoons, drank two tablespoons worth of fat, but drink it and eat something along with it. Don't like, don't do the fasting thing unless you are really experienced with that and you feel like it's going to be a good choice for you. So I would definitely eat with it, but that's kind of my experience. And I've seen a lot of women have similar experiences with the bulletproof coffee type of thing. Okay. So I'm gonna, were you done? Did you have more to say? I don't know. Still thinking, but you go, you okay. go girl. I have quite a few different points to make. I have, Okay. Just my initial blanket statement is that I personally don't believe – I'm not a fan of drinking calories. This is also why I don't really like smoothies. I Well, Christina loves chewing. I think that chewing is really, really important. and It is. I think it also depends – I think it really depends who you are. So, for example, I think that starting your day off with bulletproof coffee is either a really easy way for someone to overeat or undereat. I see a lot of people who are struggling with their weight – And I'm like, why are you adding a few hundred calories to your drink in the morning for really no purpose? It adds up really fast. Yeah, it can just, you know. It's like 400, it could be up to 400, 500 calories. Yeah, that is, I just think that is so silly. Like if you're going to be, if you're going to be inputting that many calories into your body, your body is expecting food. Okay. I just don't understand that. Um, Oh, so it can either lead to overeating like that. So if somebody is out of touch with their their hunger signals, you know, they might not realize that that is satiating um, and basically just be having too many calories for their body very easily. Like if you're having a full on bulletproof coffee and then your breakfast um, and you're not really, you're just eating to eat and not paying attention to when you're actually hungry or full or the opposite. So it can lead people to have, they'll put some fat in their coffee and they're like, I'm so full. And then like Kara said, it's like you have lunch and then dinner and then you've under it you're under eating and then you end up down regulating re- your metabolism because you eat less calories. Um, so I think it can be really tricky. So if you have trouble, trouble with your hunger signals, I would just stay away from that. Um, the, uh, and also, but then also it's like these, like these are tips I will use with clients who are looking to gain weight as well. 
And, like, I used this mm-hmm. myself when I was trying to gain weight. I would drink my calories because it's much easier to get them in like that. You don't really notice. You know, like, a smoothie is a great way to get a 2,000-calorie meal in if you put the right oh, you can. In. You know what I mean? <laughs> you could put, like, your whole day's yeah. worth of calories into you know, a smoothie. Like, a smoothie is a great example of, like, people make – 200 calorie smoothies without realizing it and they take two, they make 2000 calorie smoothies without realizing it like when it's liquid we really don't have a sense of how much food we're eating because our bodies were not designed to have liquid meals i'm sorry i'm like this uh, the cavemen do not have blenders i'm just gonna say it the, but the other thing is i'm like but then i'm like okay if you're just like talking about putting putting a bit you know i don't know if you're talking about putting a little bit of coconut oil in your coffee because you like the taste, right? It's no big um, deal. And it's like, not doing it's anything. Little. Yeah, it's not, you don't have a weight issue or whatever. You're not, then what, if you like it, you do, like, go for it. Yeah, it tastes then good. Do it. Go for it. I mean, because there is some merit to it. Um, if you want. Well, it's also like just really quick. It's a really good introduction to people that actually don't eat enough fat, like mm-hmm. as is right now, and you like the texture and the taste of Bulletproof Coffee, like that's a good segue. I feel like that's kind of what Bulletproof Coffee was designed for, like was to get people to start like thinking that fat is good and putting mm-hmm. it in our coffee and making it like delicious and taste good and frothy and all of that. That was like the segue to making fat cool again. And now we're starting to overdo it, but yeah. it was a good segue. Yeah, and the other thing is like, it can really help, like, okay, there's a, f- a few reasons why it can actually help, because coffee is pretty acidic, um, and it can be hard on some people's guts, so the fat sometimes can help neutralize that acidity in the coffee, and can help calm you down, or also, if you're really sensitive to caffeine, like, I know for me, the caffeine doesn't, I, kerosene, like, when I am caffeinated, I'm <laughs> so jittery and crazy, I'm super sensitive, um, it sort of slow. It slows the absorption of that into your body, so it can help not only with an insulin spike, but also with this caffeine spike. And so it kind of, and it can also help kind of prolong the effect. So if you're somebody like me, or if I take, it, if I drink a cup of coffee, I'm gonna have a really huge caffeine spike and kind of like you know rise and fall. It it helps sort of give you like a sort of even a more even energy burst um, and kind of can help prolong the effects too because it takes longer to digest um, fat than just the, you know, the coffee or the matcha alone. So it can help with like the jitters if you get those, especially if you're on an empty stomach. Um, so it can, it can help in those ways too. Yeah. And I, th- okay. So I used to work at picnic. If you guys are, you've probably heard me say that before, but it's like, basically this all gluten-free paleo inspired restaurant in Austin. Everyone loves it. I used to work there and that's like exactly what we would say to people because we, people would come in and like all they sold really sell is butter coffees or like they don't call it bulletproof coffee. They call it butter coffees or like buttered matcha, butter bone broth, all of that. And that's what we would say, but it helps slow the absorption of caffeine. And it's actually true. I never would get jittery when I drank bulletproof coffee there. And then also there are serious benefits to MCT oil. Mm -hmm. If you're a person that tolerates MCT oil well, because I've either found that like MCT oil is freaking rock star for you, or it makes you poop your pants and feel like crap. So there's two sides of that spectrum, but MCT oil is amazing when you're getting it sourced properly and extracted properly. Um, I usually only drink the Bulletproof brand because that's just kind of all I trust for some reason. Maybe I'm just a prey to good marketing, (laughs) but that's really all I trust. Um, And it really has been shown in a lot of studies to boost cognitive function, and it does get converted in the liver to ketones pretty instantly. Um, And it has really good benefits for the gut as well because it is antimicrobial, antifungal, all of that stuff. So taking MCT oil regularly is a good thing for some people. So if you can tolerate it, I think adding MCT oil to your drink is a really good idea. And I still do that regularly. Yeah, I think it's like, you know, sometimes people will want to incorporate MCT oil into their diets and they're like, what do I do with this? And it's like an easy way to you know just like do <laughs> what it. do I do with this but I yeah. also so something like when this started becoming really trendy I was getting so annoyed because I would see people post about it and a lot of these bloggers who eat these 
high carb diets, <laughs> honestly. Um, and they're like, I do my bulletproof coffee and then I go and eat this big stack of pancakes, right? And I'm like, okay, this is a mismatch. So bulletproof coffee can be, is really helpful. And like Kara said, it's like a tool to get a more fat. And you typically people who are like wanting a lot more fat are people who are using that because they're following a ketogenic diet or they're fat burners in general. So your body can utilize that fat. Like if you are not a fat burner, I mean, it could cause weight gain instead of the other benefits first, Mm -hmm. you know, just drink this cup. But the problem, like people have issues on ketogenic diets because they have trouble getting in enough fat. Like it can be hard to eat enough fat to get into ketosis. And so that's why it's an easy way to get in more fat without feeling like nauseous from pouring so much fat in your food. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. And, and it easily converts to ketones. So mm -hmm. people use it as a trick to like help you get into ketosis because it's a super easily digestible fat. Like it's almost like taking exogenous ketones. Dave Asprey would kill me if he heard me say that because I've heard him say on the podcast it is not exogenous ketones, but whatever. Like it pretty much converts to ketones really quickly. It does raise your blood ketones. Like I've tested it. So it does. I guess but, my thing is just like, I don't know why someone's trying to do bulletproof coffee if they're not a fat burner and you don't have to I be, mean, in, you don't have to be in ketosis yeah. to be a fat burner. But Except like, unless you just straight up like it, Yeah, you know, exactly. like if you just like, like the taste, I, and, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you also are a fat burner. Yeah, I can I can go in and out like of burning carbs and and yeah. burning fat pretty easily. Um, so I drink it when I want to drink it, and most of the time I honestly don't though. I just I don't know. It just doesn't feel good because like what Christina was saying, I prefer to eat my calories. And personally, if I were to drink a bulletproof coffee, like I said, I would drink it like and then eat breakfast, but I would reduce my fat at that yeah, breakfast. Like yeah. I wouldn't, I wouldn't just go ham and do like bacon, avocado, eggs, like all of the fat, you know, I'd probably do a little bit higher protein mm-hmm. of a breakfast and tons of veggies. Yeah. And you know, I'm not going to do no fat. I'm going to cook it in a little bit yeah. of fat, but I'm not going to add near the amount yeah. because like you said, you just drank all of your fat yeah. like for that meal you have but, to yeah it's like you have to realize like who was this this whole trend designed for it was for these people who are, are following the bulletproof diet and maybe they're eating only one meal or two a day you know and so they're and it's pretty low carb yeah it's it's diet. low it's low carb they're getting one meal a day in you, you know versus like these people we see who are like here's my bulletproof coffee and they put this is the other thing it's like there's a difference to me between putting like some coconut butter or some coconut oil or MCT oil in your coffee or tea or whatever versus like, let me put in a tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of coconut oil, a tablespoon of MCT. Like they're, they're putting in 600 calories in there. Oh my God. And I I'm have like, to tell you this. What? <laughs> so when I worked at picnic, my drink that I used to make, what can I just tell you what it was? It was absolutely insane. I'm I would, scared. I was the person that I drank 600 calories worth of fat. Picnic is a playground, like for bulletproof, bulletproof coffee. You can make insane drinks. So what I would do is at the time I could tolerate butter pretty well. So I would do a tablespoon of butter, a tablespoon of brain octane oil. And then we had these little cubes that were melted cacao butter and cacao powder. We called them cubies and made things chocolatey. So I did a table. (laughs) Yeah. It's basically like two tablespoons of fat and cacao powder, like in one little solid cube. So I'd put one of those in there too. So I had butter Brain octane oil, cacao butter, like two Mm. tablespoons of cacao butter. That's already like three to four tablespoons of fat right there. Then I would add in spices. Like we had this Mayan spice that was kind of like spicy and cinnamony. It was super good. Um, I would do that. And then I would add in two scoops of collagen peptides. um, And then we topped it off with coffee and blended it. And it tasted like, like we called it the... Mo- like Mayan mocha or something. And it was ridiculous. Like the amount of calories that was in that drink that I made, it was crazy, but I was not hungry yeah. like at all. It was, I was not hungry, but I was also kind of bloated. 
So. And that's the thing. It's like, and it's also different. It's like, we're talking about like, what are your daily habits? Like if you're drinking a drink like that and then you're eating all your regular food, like you'll probably put on weight. But I mean, if that's a once in a while thing, like. I definitely gained weight. Yeah. Like, like I definitely did. It's different if it's like a once in a while thing, you know, it's like, like I'm saying, there's a big difference between adding like one to two tablespoons versus like putting in six to 800 calories. Like. Yeah. Huge difference. Like that, like you should, if you want six to 800 calories, Get out a plate, put a shit ton of food on there, and eat it. Chew it. <laughs> Get out a <of> plate. <laughs> Step one. That's my advice. Put away your mugs. <laughs> yeah, that's really that's really all I have to say about bulletproof coffee. If you like it, drink it. If you're like at all concerned about it, you probably just shouldn't. Like, yeah, it's not really necessary, but it's also not a deal breaker. You just kind of have to play around with it and. And see if it works for you. It's like and use those tips. If you're trying to lose weight and you can't figure out why, and you're drinking bulletproof coffee, that's probably, plus eating all the food. Yeah, that's probably why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I actually did um, lose weight. Actually, it wasn't body fat though. Like I lost inflammation weight mm-hmm. when I took out bulletproof coffee, and I'm not exactly sure why. Well, but because were you using bulletproof coffee to intermittent fast, and then you had lunch and dinner? No, um, I did that process, but then I was like, I followed my own advice and I was like, I'm going to still do my bulletproof coffee and then I'm going to eat with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I did that and I was still super inflamed, but then I was like, F this bulletproof coffee stuff. And I just ditched it altogether. Um, and I literally lost like five pounds of inflammation, like not fat. Were you still drinking coffee? Um, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. Okay, it wasn't bulletproof coffee. I actually stopped drinking coffee. Yeah. That's it. There I switched go. to matcha. Yeah. Yes. All right. Yeah. Detective Christina held me out there. I know. I, I'm, I'm good. I get, I get inflamed by coffee. Like, mm-hmm. it makes sense. So, yeah. okay. But for a lot Anyways. of women, we as women are more sensitive to stressors, to cortisol spikes and coffee is a stressor. A lot of women just in general don't do well with bulletproof coffee, especially if you're trying to use that to intermittent fast. If you're going to do that, please add some form of protein in with the coffee. Um, yeah. Maybe blend in some hemp seeds or something. Just get like get in, add in collagen. It will just help um, that stress response a bit because it can be hard for women's bodies to ju- when we only receive protein in the morning or I mean fat sorry only fat in the morning and does not send the right hormonal signals to our bodies and mm-hmm. can cause hormonal imbalances down the line so just want to throw that out there but yeah so cool. shout out to Leanne Vogel's rocket fuel latte because yeah. that's what I think of yeah go look that up she's the best listen to our episode with her she's awesome Mm-hmm. cool well okay. i think that about wraps it up for this week remember that we're gonna have a meetup on saturday at noon at what, what is it brood and pressed in downtown dallas it's in the uptown area it's super cute if you live in dallas you freaking know where it is you know so come <laughs> yeah we would love to see you there and it'll be a lot of fun and make sure that you join our facebook group straight up paleo pals if you have not already so you can meet friends and do all of the things and so much fun and leave a rating and a review on itunes if you haven't already it means a lot to us and if you want to support us it would help us if you told people about the podcast spread the word share the love we would really appreciate it yep and remember to send in questions because we love them we love answering them all the all the good stuff so sending questions and do all that fun stuff but You can yeah, submit we'll those. We'll see you then. You can submit those um, on our website, straightuppaleo.com, or via email, straightuppaleo at gmail.com. Cool. Yep. Sounds good. We will see you Saturday. We'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> or we'll see you next week on Thursday. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye.